So here I am back with an update on my Coronel split keyboard build. This video was done in collaboration with Elecro, who offered their PCB and 3D printing services for this video. They are currently running a mechanical keyboard special promotion, so be sure to check them out at the link in the description below. The promotion should still be active for a few days at the time this video gets published. Let's jump right into it. I decided to use the same case design from the original video, but this time I wanted to go for a slightly different look, so I opted for a translucent resin material. This material is very impressive, as it looks just like milled acrylic. For a wireless build like mine, perhaps some of the potential of this material is wasted, as I would imagine a wired keyboard with RGB underglow would be better suited. Without the lights I'm using in these shots, the material doesn't quite catch the eye in the same way, so my recommendation would be to only go for this material if you plan on having RGB and perhaps opt for a black nylon print if you're going for a wireless build like mine. I do have to point out that while the material of the print is great, the finished quality of the print was a bit of a letdown. There's a number of imperfections on the surface, probably left over from the resin printing process. I think they might go away with some manual sanding, but I left it alone for now. I also got new PCBs, which are a big step up from the ones used in the previous video. These new ones are modified by Pete Johansson, creator of the ZMK firmware, and they are intended specifically for wireless builds. No issues at all with the PCB manufacturing from Elecro, as these came out nicely and without any issues whatsoever. And of course, I co-opted Void again, who is responsible not only for the design of the case, but also all the soldering and troubleshooting that was needed to make all of this come together. Let's go over the changes and improvements. Starting with the PCBs, you can see that there's no more hot glue needed for the power switch, which is now cleanly mounted to the PCB in a much more accessible location. For a cleaner look, we also decided to skip the battery connector and instead tuck the battery and wiring underneath the nice nano controller. The key switches are still hot swappable, but this time Milmax sockets were needed due to this particular PCB design. Be advised that if you have 5 pin switches, you will need to modify them to 3 pin switches with a pair of flush cutters. Finally, these new PCBs have dedicated support for nice view displays. These small monochrome screens refresh at 30 frames per second and they have a very low power draw, similar to that of e-paper displays. One thing I should mention here if you plan on using them is that the ZMK firmware needs to have a pin edited to work correctly with these PCBs due to a wrong pin assignment. I'll add some additional information regarding this in the video description. Moving on, the switches this time around are the Gatoron Oil Kings, instead of the Gatoron CJ switches that I used last time. I haven't modified these new switches at all and kept them completely stock. They have excellent smoothness, almost on par with the CJ switches, but what they do differently is offer a deeper sound and a different feel. I think the sound signature of the Oil Kings works just a bit better for a Corune build. The displays, while not a complete game changer, do offer quite a bit of utility. For one, you get a battery indicator for each of the two halves, making it a much more convenient way of knowing how much charge you have left, especially since the Bluetooth battery indicator in Windows 11 has a habit of getting stuck, at least in my experience. As I was working on this video, the option of showing battery percentage instead of an icon was added to ZMK. I think I'll stick to the battery icon for now, but it's great to know that the option is out there, should I decide it's time for the change. The display also shows you when the keyboard is paired and to which devices, from a maximum of 5 total devices. This is great because this was really annoying if you happen to accidentally switch to a different profile, and then you kinda had to count how many times you tapped to get it back to the correct one. Other than that, the nice view will also show you the name of the current layer and the neat little word per minute counter in the top right corner. You can see it here in action as I type away. The display on the right half of the Corona is a little bit emptier, as it only displays the connection status to the left half and the battery level. Now, I haven't been able to do a proper battery life test, but the ZMK Power Profiler estimates that I should be getting the same battery life I did without the screen, which should give me about a week of daily use for the left half and up to a month on the right half. I'm using a magnetic USB cable, so charging the keyboard when it's getting low is super easy. Also, it takes less than an hour to fully charge one of the halves. As for the layout I'm using and my general thoughts about the wireless Corona as a daily driver, I recommend watching my previous video, as everything I stated then is still relevant and unchanged. 
For me, this update really perfects the keyboard. I really like the way it turned out and there's not much that I can think of when it comes to improving it further still. So for future videos, perhaps me and Void will focus on something new. And if we do, then you can be sure I will continue this keyboard video series. As for my next video, I will be returning to the high-end small form factor build scene with something that I think is very special. I'll try to have a teaser out soon and keep the waiting time short. Until then, thanks a lot for watching this video and if you enjoyed it, subscribing would go a long way. Bye for now.